Sketching Parabolic Arcs. In this video, we'll see how to easily and quickly sketch parabolic arcs. One reason that this is useful is that parabolic arcs are a common path of action for falling motion. Furthermore, parabolic arcs are often appearing in the graph editor for accelerating motion. For example, the motion curve for the height of a falling object is a parabolic arc in the graph editor. Here you see the parabolic arc of the path of action for a ball flying through the air. Also, the corresponding motion curves for the ball's vertical and horizontal positions. Catenary arcs are very similar to parabolic arcs. The graph of a parabola, the red line, and a catenary, the black line, show that they almost overlap as curves. Catenary arcs are not a path of action, but they're common since they're the shape of hanging lines. So let's see how to sketch a parabolic arc in profile. We'll start by picking the lower left and lower right points of the arc. In a jump, these would be the takeoff and landing. You then draw a box with the top line indicating the apex height. By drawing diagonals, we can easily divide the box into quarters and mark the apex at the center of the upper line. Next, we draw diagonals in the upper part of the upper boxes and quarter those. The center of those boxes, upper boxes, are the breakdown drawings on our parabolic arc. Now, you may notice that we're using fourth down at halftime rule for these points. Finally, sketch a smooth arc that connects the points and is flat at the apex. Voila, you have sketched a parabolic arc. See? This process may sound complicated, but once you practice it a few times, you realize that it's very simple and quick. The graph editor has a grid, so the fourth down at halftime point for a parabolic arc is easy to estimate. Just be sure that at the apex, the curve is flat. Let's look at Wiley e. Coyote's path of action in this clip from Beep Beep. Now, Wiley travels in a parabolic arc up to the apex, then stops and falls straight downward. Path A is the cartoony path of action, and path B is the physically correct path of action. The animators chose the cartoony path of action for good reason. Wiley Coyote takes a beating, but we don't feel that it's animal cruelty because the laws of physics are bent, reminding us that he's in a cartoon universe. Making the action more realistic would make it violent, changing our emotional reaction to the scene. Getting back to sketching parabolic arcs, let's look at them in perspective. While they look different, the spacings follow all the same rules as for arcs in profile. Again, we start with the first and last points, which we put on the ground plane. The line connecting them intersects the horizon line, HL, at the vanishing point, VP. Next, you pick the apex height and draw a line to the same vanishing point. The apex is located by drawing diagonals 
just as before. Next, you add points by using the fourth down at halftime rule. You can check that a line through these points uh, give the breakdown points and goes to the same vanishing point. Finally, sketch a smooth arc connecting the points. At the apex, the arc should be parallel to the top line pointing to the vanishing point. The apex of a parabolic arc for a jump should be above the halfway point between takeoff and landing, which is harder to judge with perspective. Let's check if the apex of this jump is correct. Here are the drawings for the takeoff, apex, and landing. Checking the perspective, it looks like the apex is just a bit too close to camera, but not too bad. Let's look at another path of action seen in perspective, specifically from the plane crash scene in Madagascar 2. Notice that the arc is shallow when the plane flies off the cliff, but it is very steep right after the apex. This path of action is similar to the plunging motion of a roller coaster, which makes it more exciting than the realistic path of action. Again, the animators had good reasons for bending the laws of physics. So in summary, to sketch a parabolic arc, you pick the endpoints and the height of the apex. The position of the apex is halfway between the endpoints. To find the points on each side of the apex, you use the fourth down at halftime rule. Sketching arcs in perspective requires drawing vertical lines as verticals and horizontal lines converging to a vanishing point. Sketching an arc is useful for checking the position of the apex in a jump. And finally, the shape of the arc may be distorted to change the emotional impact of a scene. Now you know how to create parabolic arcs quickly and easily, which is useful even if you later decide to distort them.